Hello again folks, in this video I'm going to show you how to repair a car remote key fob such as this one. Um, this belongs to a colleague of mine's at work and uh, as you can see the rubber has disintegrated and the small uh, tactile switch has, has basically come apart revealing the two contacts meaning he can't even uh, put his finger in the hole anymore and, and uh, operate the switch. So yeah, I thought I'd take you through how to repair a key fob if yours is like this or if the buttons have stopped working and uh, you know, save yourself a few quid. There are companies will do this for you. You can mail in your key, they will refurbish it, do exactly what I'm going to do and charge you 20, maybe 30 pounds for it. Um, you know, depending on what kind of key fob it is and who you're, you, who you're going to. Of course, you've then got the added cost of paying to post it to them as well. So, yeah, this is going to save you a few quid, hopefully. The only tools you're really going to need is some sort of prying tool uh, or a small uh, flat-headed screwdriver, flat-bladed screwdriver, I should say. Um, you're going to need a soldering iron. Of course, you can pick them up for around, you know, three or four pounds, depending on where you go. And of course, you're going to need the spare parts. Now, the spare parts are super cheap. This is um, a well, this is a C, it says Siemens on there. This is for a Vauxhall, so probably quite a lot of the, the General Motors group uh, will use a similar uh, type key fob. And the, the, the parts are prevalent on AliExpress and places like that. I got this. Uh, set which includes the rubber buttons the battery compartment and uh, two replacement micro switches uh, tactile switches and that cost just one pound 52 i think it was including delivery so yeah even including even including the purchase price of a soldering iron uh, and a small amount of solder you could probably save yourself 10 15 20 pounds by doing this repair yourself it's not a difficult repair. We'll start off by using, um, this is a, a PCB scraping tool. I'm just going to pop it in there like so and apply a little bit of downward pressure. And as you can see, the entire remote mechanism pops out. Now, point to note, if you decide to do a complete overhaul and you want to change the blade of your remote key fob, uh, they you know, basically taking this into a, a key cutter and getting a new blade cut. You will need to remove this here. I don't know if you can just make that out, that small black chip, a uh, little bit of silicon, whatever you want to call it. Um, that is the transponder um, and you'll need to transfer that into the new blade. Otherwise, your car won't stop, start. Sorry. Um, this is this is the, the part that the ECU reads when you put the key in to make sure that this is the correct key for the car uh, and enables the, the system to fire up. Hopefully they, that makes sense. Right, here is the remote part. So we'll just take off this split ring here just to make things a bit easier. Uh, all we're gonna do is use our pry tool here or small flat bladed screwdriver to pop the top cover off like so. There's the battery half. So what we can do here is uh, pop the battery out and immediately transfer that into the new case. Let me just make sure that's gonna fit. Just want to check how that looks compared to the one. There we go. So yeah. That's the battery transferred, nice and easy there. And we can get rid of that other half now. And now we're gonna do the actual button repair, the bit that's gonna take the most amount of work. So in here, you can see there's a couple of plastic clips. If we just bend those to one side and lift it up, you'll see the whole PCB pops out. And we can compare the two halves, the new versus the old. Very slight design differences as a cross on there versus uh, a little dot on the new one. There is a rubber gasket, as you can see, so that's good to see. So there is going to be an element of uh, water resistance to this. But we'll get that out of the way, and now we will concentrate on replacing the buttons. Now, our new buttons, which are here, let me just take them out. There is a slight design difference, although the footprint is the same. So the new ones have got a little oblong uh, button on top versus the old ones which have a little round dot it shouldn't matter the old one works still but i'm going to replace them both but yeah the footprint's the same so there'll be no dramas uh, replacing them it should still work 
Okay, dokes. So as you can see, there's only two solder points on uh, one on either side of the switches, so four in total. And that's all we're going to do. We're just going to reflow this and uh, basically just swap them out. So if I zoom in a little bit, like so, and what I'm going to do is just get a little bit of fresh solder. Uh, the chances are, I mean, this is a fairly old car, but the chances are it still is probably lead-free solder. So all I'm going to do is tin the tip of the iron and just apply a little bit of heat and almost use it to, to pull it up. I was a bit aggressive with that. Um, there, there was a risk that I could have torn off the other pad on the other side there, but luckily that did not happen. As you can see, that switch is now off and we will do the same on the other side, taking care not to disturb any of these uh, passive surface mount components. So I'll do this side and gently lift it up. There we go, wasn't as aggressive that time. And then same at the other side. And as you can see, the switch pops up extremely easily. Okay, now I don't have tweezers. I cannot find my tweezers. So I'm gonna do this the hard way and just manually position these in. So what I'm gonna do is on one side, I'm going to tin the pads like so. You never saw that. There we go. So yeah, I've just applied a small amount of solder to uh, one side of both switches, if that makes sense. And all I'm gonna do is bring the switch in to position, uh, the rough position, and then could really do with some blue tack or something here. I'm gonna reflow that solder and move the switch into the rough position. So a slight twist on it there. There we go, and just slightly adjust the, the other side, and then we'll just reflow that little bit of so that was already there, and that's almost it. I'm not quite happy with it to be honest, so I'm just gonna reflow that again, try and lift this side up. There we go. Yeah, that's close enough. It's not perfect. It's not perfectly in alignment, but it would be so much easier if I did have tweezers. So I'm going to try and do this one a bit better. Get it roughly in position, reflow that solder. Yeah, that one's better. And then on the other side, I can see it's completely flat. I'll just apply it. There we go, that bit of solder in there. That one's on there. Okay, right, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pause that video. I'm not, as you can see, the top one there is, is nice and straight. The one at the bottom is a little bit wonky. I'm just gonna address that and I'll come back to you once I've done it. Two seconds. Okay, right, that's uh, me straightened that up there. Um, I don't edit my videos, I pause them now and again, but as you can see, I made a little bit of my a little bit of a mess of it there. Um, but that's it now, ready to go back in the housing. Yeah, I always like to include the, as I always say it, what's and all, just so you can see that I'm not perfect, I'm far from perfect, but it's easy mistakes that are easily remedied. Okay, so now that we've done that, it's now a case of uh, putting this back in. So we've got the two notches on the right hand side next to the uh, gold battery contacts, and they of course fit in there like so. So this see how that's looking it's looking okay and all we're going to do now is pop the two halves of the remote back together like so 
we'll give it a quick test press. Don't know if you can hear that, but got a nice tactile feel to it. And then all we do now is pop the two halves back together and a quick press. And there we have a repaired key. So there we go, um, including you know me waffling on that's 10 minutes long this video um as i say you're going to save yourself a few quid if you do it yourself not a difficult repair just a little bit of attention to detail which i lacked somewhat in this video um but a byproduct of it is you can have an extra bit of money in your wallet and of course if you haven't already got a soldering iron you're gonna have a soldering iron that you can use for future repairs or uh, building pcbs and stuff like that kits and such like if you fancy taking it up as a hobby Anyway, enough waffling on. Um, thank you very much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, give me a thumbs down. Please add any comments you have uh, if you'd like to do so. And of course, if you haven't already done so and you'd like to do so, click on my fat head down here to subscribe. Um, hope you're all staying safe and well. Um, stay indoors and all that good stuff. And I'll see you again in the next video. As always, take care of yourselves and all the best.